树阴浓，夏日长。Right, so I might as well make a start then.、Uh, just to introduce myself, my name is Sean Coates, and I'm kind of helping put together this conference today.、Um, by trade, I'm an academic skills tutor, so、uh, which is nothing at all to do with kind of mysticism and astral projection and crop circles and alternative thinking, you know. So. The kind of stuff that I'm doing today isn't really something typically for the staff room at work. You know, <laughs> I wouldn't talk about this kind of pretty get funny look. I was mentioning, you know, asking projection to my colleagues at the university.、Um, so this talk really is about my starts off with my personal journey, some of the things that have happened to me in kind of years gone by. So my personal experiences. Then I kind of get onto conspiracy theories. So I had a few experiences about 20 years ago, and then I wanted to know more about what was, go what was going on in the world. So then I started getting into kind of like sort of David Icke type stuff, conspiracy theories, what's going on in the world. Then getting into more like metaphysics, and then the last couple of years more into the spiritual kind of thing. So it's kind of been like a natural progression for me over the last few years.、Uh, so. I've called this presentation either I couldn't decide on the title really, so it's either an awakening process or down the rabbit hole. So I'm like, take your pick really.、Um, so what I'd say about this presentation is、um, these. It's not like a philosophy of mine. It's not like fact. It's not like I've got the answers and it, it, this is the truth. For me, it's these are just thoughts, conjecture, supposition, just ideas. You know. I find out about things, and then it, for me, it's just an idea. It's just a thought. I don't say I believe it. That's a belief system. Yeah. This time next year, I might be looking at different things. So my ideas, my thoughts, are kind of constantly in flux, if you like. You know. So yeah. So I'd say there's no right or wrong answers for any of this. Do your own research.、Um, that's probably the best way to 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 go go about things. Okay. Uh, so if I go back 25 years、uh, when I was at school, this is the kind of thing that I used to do. <laughs> used to watch the tally, you know.、Uh, TJ Hooker. Anybody watch TJ Hooker in the 1980s? Yeah. yeah.、Uh, the A Team.、Uh, yeah. So watching TV, reading the papers, you know, going to work, watching TV, getting drunk on a Friday night with my friends, watching the news, watching the football, and then. Doing it all over again the next day. All right, so I wasn't really thinking outside the box. I was just do just doing regular stuff. You know, it's great, but that's kind of the routine I was kind of I was in. But then I was then I'm thinking, you know, I'll get onto the kind of UFO experiences I had a bit later on.、Uh, but, I, but for me, I start kind of thinking. Outside the box, when I when I had my first UFO experience, and I'll mention that a bit later on. So kind of ponder, you know, we live on a planet.、Um, within the planet, we live in a solar system which has got nine planets.、Uh, we also there's a galaxy which has got 50 billion planets.、Uh, a universe is supposed to have 100 billion galaxies, each with 50 billion planets. Then there's an idea that there might be other universes, alternative universes. And you know, is there something even greater than the universe?、Uh, and then you hear that only four percent of the universe is visible. All right, so ninety-six percent of the universe is, in, is invisible to us. What's in the other, in the other ninety-six percent?、Uh, and then began to look at things like alternate timelines and maybe higher dimensions as well. Okay, so the way I'm thinking is beginning to change a bit. Uh, right, so some of my experiences then.、Uh, the first experience I had was in 1989 when I was out walking with a friend.、Um, it was about 11 o'clock at night, clear sky, walking, walking in the streets, just hanging about,、um, and I saw, you know, imagine the brightest star in the sky, which Venus, is, yeah. which yeah, imagine kind of four times brighter than Venus,、um, flying round in the sky, changing directions at right angles. Don't know if anybody else has seen that. At least do a stop. Turn direction and then travel on in a different. Have、yeah. you seen that as well? Yeah. So that's the first thing that I saw. 
Uh, this is a talk in itself really in 1997. Um, I went camping with a friend of mine and we saw a blue light and a, and a white light bobbing around. We were, we were camped in a field in the middle of nowhere. We saw a blue light and a white light about half a mile in front of the car bobbing around. These two lights disappeared and then we saw these two uh, entities walking around, <laughs> which is like totally blows your mind. I'm not saying it was UFO, I'm not saying we saw two ETs walking around, but certainly we saw something which was really unusual. Um, and basically we both kind of fell asleep at the same time after we saw these two things walking around. And the next thing we know, it's nine o'clock the next morning, and it's like, where's the last nine hours gone, you know? So, but anyway, that's, that's a talk in itself, really. Um, other things as well, travelling, uh, driving by car, travelling from Brighton to London at night, um, after being week away for the weekend, um, get to a roundabout that said go and continue north to, to go to London. You know, the, the, the road was saying London northbound. So I'm going, I'm going north on this road to London, and then two minutes later, I arrive at the same roundabout, but this time I'm going south. So I've, suddenly I've, I'm going completely the wrong direction. I had to turn around at the roundabout and then go back north again towards London. So that was a bit bizarre. Uh, in 2009, this was in the local newspapers, I saw, um, I can only describe as like an upside down lampshade flying over the top of the town I used to live in in Shropshire. And other people in the town saw this, you know, they like winding the windows down looking out in the sky and they can see this thing flying over the top of the town. Uh, I've seen a triangular shaped craft, I mean it sounds far fetched, yeah, I couldn't believe I saw this one because you know, you, you read about these ones don't you, these triangular shaped UFOs that have got like, a light in each corner um, and I saw that with a, a friend of mine, so I've seen the triangular craft and I've also seen these spherical metallic looking balls in the sky, so <laughs> no idea what it is but anyway that's, I seem to be the person who sees a lot of UFOs for some reason. So anyway, seeing these UFOs kind of started me off on my research and I was beginning to think, you know, what's going up, what else is going on in the universe, in the world, you know, what, what else is going on? Uh, but trying to find out about this hidden knowledge is almost like, and I've kind of put together this little image, it's almost like there's a guy shining a, shining a torch in the cave and that is meant to be your accepted boundary of knowledge, all right? You're not allowed to look anywhere else in the cave, only way the powers that be kind of shine the light, okay, so that's where you're just meant to focus your attention in terms of the education system, in terms of the media, don't look anywhere else, just look where they, in inverted commas, want you to look, okay, so looking anywhere else was, was kind of off limits. Okay, so I started doing research on the internet and you, you, get, you, you might have seen some of these people before, um, Project Camelot interviews, uh, rents, Coast to Coast, Edge Media, Neil Kramer, you know, different people are coming in with all these different theories of what's going on. So I'm looking at Google, I'm looking at YouTube, forums, I'm going to talks, I'm reading books, uh, and then just people you meet exchanging information. Uh, but again, you know, you need to do your own research, it's what, what resonates with you really. Uh, so anyway, for me the first stage was coming across information about secret societies uh, and so-called elite families, you know, the bloodlines, uh, Rockefellers, Rothschilds, so-called elite bloodlines, elite families that are running, running the world from behind the scenes, uh, who, who supposedly control the world from the top down. So presidents and prime ministers, if you believe the theory, are only kind of halfway up the pyramid of control, if you like, you know. So, if you look at the pyramid, you've got compartmentalised areas of education, pharmaceuticals, military, business and so on. And, you know, what's controlling it all from the top of the pyramid, you know, and then that's where you get back into the ET, into the ET stuff. Uh, so, in this pyramid, things like the World Health Organization, United Nations, IMF, World Bank, CIA, the Mafia, if you go along with this theory, they're all controlled by something else, all right? So they're not autonomous, they're all controlled by something at the top of the pyramid. And again, secret societies could be a talk in itself, you know, that could be a two-hour two -hour talk. Um, but I mean, if you just look at, say, the banking system, for example, which is like one compartmentalised part of the pyramid, you know, I was, I was looking at things like fractional reserve banking, where 
banks can lend out 20 times what they've actually got on the vault. So if a bank's got a billion pounds actually physically in the bank, it's allowed to borrow, it's allowed to lend out another 20 billion out of thin air to people. So it's basically got a license to make money out of thin air. If you then borrow some money to buy a car and you're paying back £250 a month to pay the car off, they can then lend that £250 out back again another 20 times. So basically banks got a license to create money out of thin air. When you sign a contract for a mortgage uh, and you borrow £100,000 to buy a house, when you sign the, the actual contract for the house, that gives them a license to create £100,000 out of thin air. So banks are basically creating digital money out of thin air. They're not actually, banks aren't even printing the cash anymore. Yeah? They're just allowed to print money, money out of thin air. It's, so for me, it's almost like the tapping, that like the Bank of England doesn't even bother printing money anymore, really. They're just typing money, they're typing numbers into the keyboard and suddenly five billion pounds appears out of thin air, all right? And people think that the money comes from the bottom up, it comes from our taxes, you know, of course, of course money exists, it comes from our labour, but actually it just comes from the Bank of England to the government and then the government has to pay the money back to the Bank of England plus interest at the top. So who, who put the Bank of England <coughs> over the government to actually, you know, issue currency? Why doesn't the government just issue its own currency? But no, the banks somehow uh, are in the position where they're giving money out to the government, which seems a bit of an odd situation. Um, and then an idea that banks like the Bank of England um, and the Federal Reserve have actually got shareholders, all right? So um, they're not actually owned by the state. They've, they've actually got shareholders. So a private bank is above governments, giving, issuing currency to governments. Okay. So anyway, I had, I had some idea about some kind of control system, you know, how we're controlled, education's controlled, finance, government, military, religion, all right? And again, that's a token itself, really, so I haven't really got a lot of time to get into that. But I became aware that there was some kind of control system. But the next thing I wanted to know was, what is the secret information that they know? Is, is there some kind of secret information that they're holding back? Yes, we're controlled by almost being hypnotised by TV and pharmaceuticals are giving you drugs and the media and all the rest of it, but digging a bit deeper, you know, what was the hidden information? So, one idea that came along was the so-called Planet X, you know, has anybody heard of Planet X before Nibiru, yeah? Okay, so I'll just quickly go through some of these so-called conspiracy theories. So the idea of Nibiru um, is that it's meant to be a binary star system that orbits, that passes by Earth every 26,000 years. And when it passes by the Earth, this planet, it's meant to have a really wide elliptical orbit. So it goes out way beyond Pluto, way beyond Neptune, and every 26,000 years it passes by the Earth, it causes earthquakes and all that kind of stuff. Again, this is just a, a theory that I came across. I'm not saying it's true, but that was like one of the secrets that they're meant to be you know, keeping quiet about. So the building underground bases and all the rest of it. Uh, so it's meant to, it's so-called Noah's Ark and the tsunamis and all the rest of it was because this planet was meant to have passed close by to Earth and cause these environmental disasters. Um, and then in 1983 there was a, a, a satellite, like a, a telescope out in space called IRIS, an infrared telescope which apparently detected this planet. And it was in the newspapers briefly and then it went quiet. So. The idea is that, you know, they're keeping quiet about this planet and it's meant to be approaching Earth and all the rest of it, all right? Uh, and then this guy called Zachariah Sitchin who talks about this planet Nibiri. Um, so anyway, so this is one particular theory that I came across. Other theories, again, I'm into the kind of conspiracy theory side of things. I don't know whether anybody's heard of these FEMA camps that have been built around America. They're building these, basically, prisons all over America that are empty. They're staffed by security personnel, but they've been empty for years. And I don't know whether anybody's seen the Jesse Ventura yeah. thing. Yeah, it's like a TV program. Outside of some of these FEMA camps, there's like thousands of coffins stacked up, and like the farmers feel next to these camps. I'm just like, what the hell's that about? You know? So are they preparing for something? And again, I'm 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 in the kind of dark negative stuff at the moment, but that's the kind of information that was was coming across. And then this. Uh, 
has anybody heard of the new airport that was built in Denver, Denver Airport? Yeah. yeah. The, there was a perfectly ordinary, perfectly fine airport in Denver. They closed it down, and then about five miles up the road, they built another airport, but at like a very high altitude. All right, so they, they closed down an, an airport, built a, a, a new airport, um, just a few miles away, which has got Masonic symbols, murals, all kinds of weird kind of imagery in the airport. It's quite difficult to see because I've, I've shown the, the, the slides down, uh, but it's got these really weird Illuminati-esque kind of imagery in the airport of um, soldiers with guns, and I'm not quite sure <laughs> what they're doing with the airport. Um, but there was something a bit funny about this airport. <coughs> Um, they had to remove, apparently, 110 million cubic feet of earth below the airport. Why would you need to remove all the earth to build an airport, you know? So it's almost like they're building a bunker beneath the, beneath the airport. Um, and in the imported really expensive granite to, to build it. Denver, Colorado. You don't know the location? I don't, but I mean, you can probably find it on the internet, okay? So anyway, this is me kind of still looking at con conspiracy theories and then you probably heard about solar flares 2012 um, we're going to get fried all the transformers are going to blow and all the nuclear reactors will melt down and it'll be you know Armageddon all the rest of it chemtrails don't know whether anybody's seen chemtrails I mean certainly where I live in Telford every day they're flying overhead um, whether it's about it, whether, they, whether it's kind of you ingesting whatever the spring into the air and maybe what you're ingesting kind of gets into your DNA and it's altering our DNA, maybe on a multi-dimensional level, or it's, it's there to get into the soil, so it's over a multi-generational kind of timeline, it's killing the crops. So if you try and plant your own food, you won't be able to grow your own food anymore because it's kind of what the spring's getting into the, into the, into the soil. Um, and then the only food you can grow is government-issued seeds, which are immune to whatever has been sprayed in these chemtrails, like aluminium or arsenic or cadmium. Um, or the third theory is whatever the spraying is going into the atmosphere to stop global warming, you know, whatever. So anyway, chemtrails seem to be something else that kept cropping up. Population control by controlling the water supply, controlling the food supply, um, giving people vaccinations. That's a bit of controversial, you know, you know, some people say, you know, is it to kind of kill the population again on a multi-generational level um, because it's, it's making you infertile. Don't know whether anybody's heard of the Georgia Guidestones before. That says we want to have, we envisage a population of 500 million, you know. This is, this is a, a, a big um, stone tablet that was suddenly cropped up about 35 years ago in Georgia. And some people speculate and say it's a Leonardi stating their intentions that, you know, they want to kill the population and down to 500 million, you know, through controlling the food, maybe have on all these viruses going around, whatever, okay? So that seems to be the recurring theme. Uh, then you find out about all these so-called underground bases that have been built around the world. Why are they building these underground bases? Are they hiding away from some kind of environmental catastrophe that's gonna happen? Um, and then, of course, the big one, 9-11, which, you know, for me, it stinks to high heaven how two towers just turned to dust, you know, when the two twin towers collapsed. You know, the firemen are walking around knee deep in rubble, basically. Where did all the porcelain toilets go? Where did the steel filing cabinets go? And, you know, even if two planes crashed into the twin towers, you know, there was, there's not enough jet fuel to make the whole building collapse. It's just not, and the temperature that the jet fuel gets up to, it doesn't get up to a high enough temperature to make two buildings with 150 floors just just disappear, you know, so that's a no-brainer to me, you know, that a bit of jet fuel on floor 115 would make the whole building completely disappear, and then the third building, I forgot what it's called, Wood, it was it? yeah, that one disappeared as well, uh, so that that was another one that seemed a bit, a bit odd. <laughs> no seismic readings when the Twin Towers collapsed. Um, uh, you know, um, and then you've got the Pentagon as well, you know, it's supposed to be a, a Boeing 747 fl flying into the Pentagon. You know, the experts say there's no way you could get a 747 doing that kind of 45 degree dive, levelling off 50 feet off the ground, perfect manoeuvre into the Pentagon. The hole is only wide enough really for something like a rocket, it's a very small hole, and they only found one CCTV image. You know, the Pentagon 
has only got one webcam apparently. <laughs> That's it. They've only got one webcam. We've and, got thousands of them. Yeah, and <laughs> so they only had one webcam and they, they only saw the front end of, of the 747, the, the front of it. That's all they've got, you know. The one that, pla the, the one that crashed in is it Pennsylvania, the yeah. one that actually crashed. Some of the only footage, I think there was a guy from CNN there saying, when he first arrived at the scene, he was saying, looking behind me at, at, the, at the wreckage, I don't think, it's, it doesn't look like there's enough wreckage there to be a plane. And that was the first and last time he heard of anything like that. After that it was, yeah, it was definitely a plane and it crashed and, and that's the end of it. Uh, and then, you know, portals to Mars and, all the, and the moon's not real, David Icke, all that kind of stuff. The problem is, what, what I found is, there's theory after theory after theory of things that are going on, all right? So you all, all the, I've just seen so many theories, um, and, and if, it's almost like this is a stage you can get trapped at, keep going to the forums every day, doing research on new things that are going on, or they're gonna try and, it's gonna be a plague, or they're gonna try and do this, they're gonna try and do that. And, you know, I thought to myself, you know, I've been doing this now for about five years, and I'm just going round and round in circles, being sucked into these theories, oh, something's going to happen next, there's going to be a false flag and then nothing happens. There's going to be, you know, there's, there's some zombies walking around in America and nothing happens, you know. So I'm, I'm beginning to think to myself, you know, there's got to be something, there's got to be something beyond this, you know, right? So it's almost like you suddenly find out some information and you think, that's it, I've got the answer now, you know. It's all the, you know, I've got the answer, there's going to be something happen next month. And I'm going to buy some. I'm going to buy a tin of beans, and I'll be all right, you know. And then nothing happens. All right. So you, you're still kind of in the matrix of of ideas. You can't seem to. You're going round in circles, really. You can't really move on to on to finding out about the truth. So for me, it's kind of if you look at the look at the slide there. The red circle is like conventional re, conventional reality, which is like you know you know watching TV, buying a house, getting into debt, having a mortgage. Uh, going to work, that's kind of conventional reality. Whenever you try and find out about the truth, which is the, the white box, the white circle, which is, you know, trying to find out about what's going on, ETs, chemtrails, you know, when you try to find out the truth, you kind of get reflected back into the matrix again. You can't really get a, get a, get a, get a grip on what's really, what's really going on. All you, all you, all you coming up across is unproven theories, Predictions that don't happen, confusion, and just depression. You just seem to be stuck in this kind of mindset. So that, <laughs> now that's me. That's me there with my research. I'm just you know up to the up to the up to my neck and all this research. Oh, people are emailing me saying, "Oh, look, you got to find out what the latest thing is," and I'm just going nowhere. So I needed a new approach. End of part one. <laughs> I love my coronation speech. Right, so yeah, so what if it turns out we create our own reality? So when you go into the forums and you go onto the internet and you're trying to find out what's going on, you're consuming somebody else's idea. It's not your own kind of, it's, you, know, you, know, you know what I mean? It's not your own idea. What if it turns out you can create your own reality, all right? If you focus solely on conspiracy theories, that's kind of the reality that you're living in. So if you constantly say 9-11, um, solar flares are going to be coming next year, if that's your life, then you become it, okay? So you kind of get trapped in this cycle of just looking at conspiracy theories. So that's me there with my tinfoil hat on. <laughs> uh, creating your own reality is better. Um, your imagination, your thoughts, could there be a portal to other realities, all right, which is getting more into kind of metaphysics and kind of spiritual stuff. But people are hypnotically weighed down by the media, by education, by banks and by big pharma, okay? So those kind of things, watching TV, the media is kind of keeping your attention diverted away from doing your own thing. No, don't, don't do your own thing, just do what we say. Watch TV, get a mortgage, get married, have kids, just do that. Don't don't have your own thoughts, don't have your own ideas, all right? So you've almost been hypnotically programmed by banking, media, politics, education, religion, and the big pharma. That's kind of the way I was, that's kind of the way I was uh, looking at things. So in practical sense, how much 
influence do we really have over our own lives, over our own reality? Okay. So this is me. This is kind of a few things, kind of that I put down in a, in a slide to try and explain. The first, the first thought I had was uh, passive power. Okay. So this is where critical mass of people ignore a system, and that collapses. Uh, the end of that reality, okay? So you can change reality by doing something passively. Um, in Arizona, in America, they, they, they put up these speed cameras, okay? And because they saw it in the UK, and, and that's a great idea to, to, to raise revenue, okay? And in America, in Arizona, people there just said, stuff that, we're not going to pay these speeding tickets. And so many people just passively ignored the system. They didn't have a megaphone saying, oh, you know, down with this idea, it's a really bad idea. They just decided that they were going to ignore the system that the government had brought in passively and it collapsed. That system of speed cameras in Arizona has been disbanded now because people just didn't deal with it, you know? So you've got passive power. If, 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 so many, if a lot of people decide they don't want to pay the TV license anymore, then that would collapse as well. You don't have to protest against it passively, you just ignore that system and it'll just collapse under its own weight. Uh, you've got direct power, which is millions of people taking to the street in protest. So that's somebody with a megaphone, you know, shouting in the street. Uh, you've got unconscious power, which is uh, seemingly unconsequential actions can have an effect on, on the timeline. So uh, if you're having a chat with somebody at the bus stop, can they say something to you which then makes you go off and do something else? Yeah, it can give you, you go off on a different timeline. Um, whereas if, if you weren't talking to that person, maybe you'd be on a different timeline again. If it's, it's hard to get my head around that one, but just coincidentally having a conversation with somebody or not, your life can go off into a totally different tangent. Uh, power of imagination. This is where, invent, for example, an invention, like the guy who invented a light bulb, that idea started off as a thought. Okay, power of imagination. Uh, right. Not challenging the powers of B, giving your consent to the current reality. Uh, right, I'm just going to move on for that because I'm kind of running out of time. Okay. Right. <coughs> right, so basically, there is potential to kind of change your reality by either passively or doing something passively or engaging it in something, do you think? Right, I'm just going to get into that. Okay, so one idea is as well as having alternate realities, could there also be alternate dimensions as well? Okay, so we supposedly live in the third dimension, but could there be a fourth dimension and a fifth dimension and a sixth dimension? And each of those dimensions have got alternate timelines as well. And I'll I'll get onto that a bit more, a bit more later on. Uh, so trying to explain dimensions then, um, I found this chart on the internet which tries to kind of mathematically encapsulate what the first dimension might look like, second dimension, third dimension. So the first dimension is like a straight line, all right? so that's basically two dots joined together with a line. Um, and then you've got the third dimension which is four dot, uh, sorry, the third dimension, fourth dimension, and the higher the dimension you, you go, the, the more complex the actual the actual join gets, does that make sense? So in the ninth dimension, you've got a really sophisticated looking looking thing. John, yeah, it is, yeah. Why, why can't we see other dimensions? Why can't we see the fifth dimension or the seventh dimension? So imagine we lived in the second dimension, okay, which is flat. So it hasn't got any depth to it, it's just flat, okay. Imagine if a 3D cube just suddenly appeared below, above us where we're living in the two-dimensional landscape. We wouldn't see it, would we, because we're living in the 2D and this cube is three-dimensional. However, if the cube came down and touched, touched us in the 2D, the bottom of the cube, then we, for, we would see the bottom of the cube because it's touched the, the second dimension, us in the 2D. All right? So for a moment, you would see the bottom of the cube because the, the, the 3D cube has touched the 2D landscape if the cube then moved away again, just, just above the 2D, it would disappear. Yeah? Does that make any sense? So it would, it's almost as though you've seen a ghost. So I think when things come down from a higher dimension, it's because they're temporarily touching our dimension, if you like, and then when they move away again, it disappears and it looks like, it looks like we've seen a ghost. Okay. 
Okay, so anyway, the speculation that higher dimensions also operate at higher frequencies, okay? Um, I don't know whether anybody's seen there we are, the cymatics, has anybody yeah, seen the cymatic yeah. experiment? Where if you sprinkle sand onto a vibrating drum, when you increase the frequency, the actual stand, the sand starts making shapes on the sand, and the more you increase the frequency, the more complicated the, the actual shapes get. All right. Geometrical shapes form, uh, they get increasingly complex as the frequency increases. Um, and I wonder if, um, if the frequencies are like dimensions, um, the higher the frequency, the higher the dimension as well. I'm trying to explain a bit more about that. Hold on a sec. Okay, so uh, I'm just trying to squeeze this into the slides. On the left hand side of the screen, you've got a mathematical concept of dimensions. Uh, in the middle of the screen, you've got maybe uh, frequencies which are also increasing at the same, likewise, the dimensions. Um, so I wonder whether when dimensions are increasing and frequencies are increasing, could your consciousness increase as well with the dimension? That sounds a bit bizarre. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. 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 So frequencies and dimensions and our consciousness could all kind of increase at the same time. Or let, for me, consciousness is like a level of awareness. Okay. So how aware are, how aware are we about? what's got all these dimensions and stuff, okay? So, imagine somebody with like really high level of consciousness is, is like this sphere here, okay? If you strip away a section of the sphere and then snap a little bit off the corner, is that our level of consciousness now? And so we're not seeing the, we're not seeing the full picture, we're just seeing like a little section, a little section of the full reality. Um, it's almost like, um, like a worm in a garden trying to consciously understand how the combustion engine of an engine works. It hasn't got the consciousness to, to, to kind of understand that. So I wonder when we're trying to think of how the universe really works, it's just like a worm trying to understand how the combustion engine of the car works. You're just never going to get it, you know, because the consciousness uh, isn't developed enough. I don't know what it is about combination strength. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've got it on the cold at the minute. Yeah. Okay, right. Let's move on. Okay, so, uh, back in the third dimension then, uh, what is the real structure of this, of this reality that we're living in now, okay? Is it, is it what is portrayed kind of through the media and through government? Okay, so, you've got enforcement of the kind of reality we live in now, which is the military, the police, private security, um, then you've got kind of government departments with, which are administering things, civil service, uh, local <laughs> government, ministries. Um, then you've got real politic, which is uh, world leaders kind of talking um, privately behind closed doors. Then above real politic, you've got supposedly think tanks. Um, and then above that, you've got esoteric groups like secret societies, Skull and Bones, Knights Templar. Um, and then above the secret societies, uh, there's a funny looking alien there. So, we can get onto that a bit later on. So, the speculation that at the top of the pyramid of power, that there's, there's like an ET there, there's like an ET race that's kind of sending instructions down f from the top through the secret societies, through the think tanks, through government, down to us. Uh, so, this, move, this moves on to the, into the ET thing then. Um, so any, at the top of the structure, the speculation that there might be some e interaction with ETs. Has anybody heard of that? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Enough, yeah. yeah. Um, so one out. So some people say that ETs have been coming for thousands of years, visiting Earth, and they've been affecting our, you know, influencing our DNA, interbreeding, whatever. Um, and to, others say that they've been here since the 1950s, where they contacted the American government, um, and they did a deal. The American government did a deal with the ETs, so they said, "We'll give you some technology if we let us do, cut, you know, abduct people and do experiments and cut and mutilation and all kinds of weird stuff." Okay.
Okay, so that's that's really going down the rabbit hole there. All right. Uh, has anybody heard about um, the different ET groups that are meant to be in in the game? Yeah. Uh, so there's meant to be various controlling extraterrestrial groups that have been infiltrating the government. This is what I've found out on the online. Uh, things like reptilians, I don't know if anybody's heard of reptilians before. It's meant to be a whole hierarchy of ETs, like draconian reptilians, uh, tall grey whites, greys and all the rest of it. Um, and then there's meant to be also benevolent ETs as well, which are meant to be helping, helping us on Earth. Vegans? I'm a vegan, I'm not with them. Yeah, vegan, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're the best ones. Yeah. So there's all there's, there's all kinds of interaction going on between various ETs. Okay, so let's say let's say within our universe there's twelve dimensions and maybe our pyramid of power is is located in the third dimension. Um is there some kind of interaction between us in the third dimension and something else above us in the fourth dimension? Does that make any sense? Like, like an ET kind of interaction. Um, so, if you go along with the, the story about the Greys, um, given the American government technology, okay, um, they're giving us technology, and we're turning a blind eye to people being abducted and so on. Um, but above the fourth dimension, there's other dimensions, you know. Um, I've, I've put there that God is not at the top of the top of the, this dimension. He's only about halfway up. That's interesting, isn't it? That is interesting. I'm not that. Yeah. So, the, so God, who created the Earth and created humans, etc., maybe He isn't the gaffer. He's not at the top of the. He's not at the top. He's only halfway up the pecking order. But to us, you know, He, <laughs> he seems to be. Okay. I'm going to speed through some of this because I'm running out of time. Okay. Right. Lady Gaga in all the pictures. Sorry? How come you chose Lady Gaga in all that? Yeah, well, this, well, yeah, I don't know, some people talk about the, the, the reality that we live in is like a reality broadcast. I don't know whether you've heard of that before. So we've been broadcast a particular kind of reality, you know, watch, you know, watching the TV, football, news, Lady Gaga, media, you know, this is, this is the reality that we're projecting, okay? Um, and one idea is there's an energy transfer going on, all right? Um, again, this gets this gets this gets pretty deep. Okay, so there's like an energy, there's like a reality broadcast, and we're we're being told that this is the reality, and and their reality broadcast is supported by the education system, pharmaceuticals, and then the you know the you've got chemtrails, and vaccinations to try and keep us in this kind of mindset. Difficult. To, I'm trying to encapsulate it in this slide. It's quite difficult to do it. Uh, one idea is just to ignore this transmission, all right, this reality that they're projecting for us to believe, like watch the news, that's the reality. If you just turn your attention away from that, um, become, become sovereign and then create and transmit your own reality. Quite difficult to kind of explain that as a concept, but... This slide here is a bit bizarre, okay? <laughs> can you can imagine if there was a cow that, that, that thinks to herself, I wonder what's behind, I wonder what's over the fence out there in the world, all right? I wonder, wonder what's over the fence. And the other cow is saying, you're a bit strange. What more do you need? You, you get fed every day and you can sleep, you know? But what more reality do you need? All right? Uh, and the farmers are saying, you know, what do you mean? There's nothing behind the fence. Stay behind the fence. This is this is my farm. And then there's kind of like animal rights activists saying, you know, free the animals. You know, cruel to the animals. I wonder if, like, on the on, a, on the next dimension up, where we are, um, where, where people think like the cow does. You know, I wonder what. I wonder how the universe really works. And then everybody else around you saying, oh, you've lost it. What do you mean? You know, you've got. TV and you've got the news and you've got football and you've got all these conventional things going on. Uh, 
could could these ETs at the top of the pyramid be like the farmer, like you know, the farmer for the farmer's field, saying, you know, don't get any funny ideas, you know, this is my planet, rather than saying this is my farm. Um, and then you've got some um, ETs, which are a bit like the animal cruelty people saying, you know. let them be free, you know, it's, I'm trying to get across, do you, do you know what I mean by that? It's like a dimensional thing, yeah? So it's just like, it's almost like they see us as like cattle in a way. But we're just in a higher dimension, just like the next level up. You've got a tree, and you've got a cow standing next to it. The cow's got a higher level of consciousness than the tree, yeah? They can do more stuff. Even though they're standing next to each other, the tree can't see the cow, yeah? Do you know what I mean? <coughs> So the cow's got a high level of consciousness in the tree. A cow can't look at the, at the, at the solar system. So to, a, so to a, an atom inside of the human body, the atom probably thinks, and, I'm, and I'd say thinks, I know an atom doesn't think, but it's almost like an atom within the human body thinks in inverted commas that its universe is just a human body that it's in. It can't conceptualize anything more than the human body. A baby probably thinks the universe is a house that it lives in, yeah? It hasn't got the, the capacity to think anything more than its, its environment that it lives in. Thinking that if you want to explore the universe, it's not about getting into a spaceship and flying around like Star Trek. Um, it's about internally raising your consciousness so you can see more of the universe. It's an internal thing rather than building a spaceship and flying around. So the way you would grow your consciousness to see more of the universe, to see more dimensions if you like, the first way is just natural progression over many lifetimes, okay? So eventually, as you have thousands of lifetimes, you would progress up the dimensional ladder and eventually return back to God, return to source, so you could do it that way, if that makes any sense. Uh, the other way to do it is um, a bit naughty, which is to take things like psychedelics, magic mushrooms, LSD, salvia, whatever, which gives you a, a quick glimpse of other dimensions, yeah? So if you take ayahuasca or something, maybe you can, you know, see a bit more than you would otherwise see of, of what's going on in the universe. I think that's a meditation part. Meditation, yeah. Um, Okay, so there's, there's a, is this that checklist that I found of things that you can do potentially to expand your consciousness so you can see more what's going on in the, in the universe, all right? Practical steps to higher frequencies. First thing would be to uh, switch off the TV because that affects your reality mindset. So if you're just watching Coronation, well, it sounds bad, doesn't it? Just watching Coronation Street. But if you're watching TV all the time like I used to, that becomes your reality. Yeah? So one idea is to don't focus so much on, on, on the media. Um, be creative and stop consuming. You know, become become more creative, you know, write or you know, play music, just do, do your own thing. Don't kind of um, just you know watch the media and let that be your reality. Uh, Self-educate, uh, get to know more about philosophy, mysticism, metaphysics, so expand your mind. Uh, get into social contact with like-minded people, which I guess is what this is about really, isn't it? <laughs> you know, trying to, to reach out to other people who are thinking out the outside of the box as well.